Correspondent Kevin Cork is traveling with the president. Reports tonight from Quebec City. Good evening, Kevin. Evening, Brett. Even before leaving the White House, the president raised a few eyebrows around the globe by suggesting Russia should be here taking part in the talks. Just the latest reminder of his unconventional style and to some, his imprudent approach to global politics. Whether you like it or not, and it may not be politically correct, but we have a world to run. And in the G7, which used to be the G8, they threw Russia out. They should let Russia come back in because we should have Russia at the negotiating table. It was quintessential Trump. An odd rejoinder about Russia before leaving for the G7 summit reverberated across the globe and caromed across the partisan political divide here at home. Why are we having a meeting without Russia being in the meeting? And I would recommend, and it's up to them, but Russia should be in the meeting. Russia was kicked out of the G8 because it invaded Ukraine and annexed Crimea. The president's sentiment that the Russians should be a part of the gathering here in Quebec clearly at odds with many in his own party and some key allies from around the world, including the U.K., which weighed in with a statement that read in part, the prime minister has always said we should engage with Russia. But beware. We've seen malign activity from Russia in a whole variety of ways. Before any conversations can take place about Russia rejoining, it needs to change its approach. <laughs> Once on the ground in Quebec, the president stood with world leaders for the traditional family photo, though the smiles seem to belie the tension beneath the surface. Just ahead of the summit, the president raged on Twitter about unfair trade, calling out America's allies for their steep tariffs on American goods, like Canada's 270 percent tariff on U.S. dairy, while demanding increased access and reciprocity. His counterparts fired back, threatening to go it alone if the U.S. slammed members with steep tariffs. The United States are naturally a great economic power, but if they continue towards a form of isolationism, brutal hegemony, of distancing themselves from their own history, from their own values, from the role they play in international organizations, that will be bad for the United States of America. But going it alone might be difficult for the rest of the group, considering the U.S. GDP for 2018 is expected to top $20 trillion, more than the other members combined. White House officials confirmed the president is expected to leave the summit hours earlier than originally planned to make way for the North Korean summit in Singapore, a visit which has stoked concerns on Capitol Hill that the president might try to end-run Congress to forge a deal in the same manner that his predecessor did with the Iran nuclear accord. I would only do a deal if I get it through Congress. I wouldn't do like Obama did. You know, he tried to get it through the Iran deal. He tried to get it through Congress, failed. So he just did it without. Earlier this evening, the president suggested that a joint statement with Canada on tariffs was still very likely at the conclusion of his visit here, Brett, though a full communique here at the conclusion is still far less likely, Brett. Kevin Cork traveling with the president. Kevin, thank you.